Uh, I'm Jason, this is Ben. Uh, we're from Team OST, and we've been working on these problems for over four years. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, designing uh, Ethereum user experiences with humans in mind. Uh, and this might seem rather obvious, but uh, as a product designer, I've been working on product for 20 years. Uh, I started working at AOL on chat rooms back in 1998. Uh, started several Web 2.0 companies. And I always say, you know, you just have to start with the problem, not with the solution. And all too often in crypto, it feels like we're, we're kind of a solution in search of good problems to solve. Now, the problem that I've been solving or trying to solve over the last 20 years, one common thread throughout my career has been kind of the signal versus noise ratio. And one of the great things that you could possibly do with uh, tokens or with value is to solve the signal versus noise and help people find more relevant information or connect with the right people. The user experience comes in when you start to design how to actually make that possible. So if you imagine an app like, let's say, Instagram, and if you wanted to make it so that every time you spend a token in Instagram, when you like a photo, um, it signals to someone else, or to, let's say in a curation model, what other people might find interesting. Well, you have to think through what is the user experience that might make that possible. Uh, this experience would not work very well for the Instagram uh, 1 billion users. Um, if they had to open MetaMask or another type of solution outside of Instagram in order to confirm a transaction. Similarly, uh, if it costs, let's say, 2.9 cents to pay for a one cent microtransaction, that wouldn't work either. Um, and so today we're gonna walk you through an actual live app. It's called Peepo. Um, it is live in the Android uh, Play Store and it is in test flight right now with Apple. We've been in beta for uh, five days now with 400 users who've done over 7,000 transactions, peer-to-peer -peer decentralized transactions on mainnet with each other in the last five days. Um, everything I'm going to show you here today is live on mainnet and is usable. Um, I was going to do a live demo, but it just, just wasn't possible with the technology uh, that they have here. Um, but let's run the video and we'll walk through the app. And so as we go through this, we'll walk to talk about what is the technology underneath that's making all this possible. So we created a app that is in the App Store that uh, is, the, the first focus of the app is 30 second videos by people who are making really interesting things in the crypto space. So here you see me loading up the Peepo app. Um, and you might see some familiar faces here. We have other 400 users that are using the app so far. We have a lot of folks who are here at DEF CON who've created kind of hello world intro videos um, about them coming to DEF CON. Um, in the app, people can create these 30 second videos. Here's Simona Pop from the Bounties Network. Um, and uh, the login for the app is with Twitter. Um, we start off with Twitter just from ease of use standpoint because Everyone in crypto is, for the most part, on crypto Twitter. Um, and we have a activation code, DEVCON5, if you want to try the app yourself. Um, so you can just go to peepo.com and download the app and use DEVCON5 as the login. When people log into the app, we give them a welcome gift of 500 Peepo coins. Um, and then they secure a non-custodial wallet in the app um, with a six-digit pin. Um, and the six-digit PIN is all we need in order to secure the wallet because we have a recovery from a smart contract model. Um, so the user does not need to write down 12 words. They can, but they don't need to. Um, once they are in the app, we show them a few things they can do. Um, swipe up to watch videos from, from other creators. Um, and you see here, the wallet is loading. This takes about 60 seconds uh, for the wallet to load to deploy the contracts. Um, but what we don't want to do is to block the user, so we use optimistic UI and allow the user to keep using the app uh, while the wallet is loading. Um, and so you can watch other videos, um, browse through the app, check out various features uh, while the, uh, the wallet is loading. So this will take just a couple seconds here. Uh, I can visit someone's profile. There's Franco. He's, uh, I think, coming from Argentina here for DevCon. Um, and I can see, I can search for various users. I can look at Simona, check out Simona's videos. Here's Simona talking about how she met Ethereum Jesus. And now we go back to the home page, and our wallet should be loaded. Okay, there we go. So the 500 people coins are now in the app, and we have Sky, I think, over here. Uh, is broadcasting live from Osaka. So the P button that I'm pressing here, every time I tap the P button, it is transferring a token from me to the person whose video I'm watching. Now one thing you'll notice is I don't have to sign every transaction manually. One of the key innovations we've done is something called session keys. Uh, when you activate that wallet and use a six-digit pin to put the, uh, basically put a key on your device, the private key, 
That private key then also uh, interacts with a multi-sig that, that for an execution key, um, but that's a session key that's enabled to execute transactions on your behalf. Um, and what you see here is in addition to sending one token at a time, I can also send any amount I want through the app. Here, it's the first time that I'm sending more than one token, so I have to authorize a session. I can authorize a session with my biometrics. Um, don't need to re-enter a mnemonic phrase or six-digit pin. Um, the session takes about 10 seconds to authorize. And then after that, all my transactions within the app are just seamless uh, for two weeks or up to $10 uh, per transaction. So now this transaction is uh, sent. As, as you see, I didn't need to connect a hardware wallet or anything. Um, I then, let's say, go back out to the blockchain here, and I can go look at these transactions on chain. So we have a block explorer. These transactions are on layer two, the OST blockchain. And here you see the transactions of 500 people coins I received as an airdrop, seven that I sent while tapping on someone's profile. And then there is the 177 people coins that I sent. Uh, and then you see the cost of sending that is a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a cent. Um, and so you have super fast microtransactions at very low cost happening on layer two, which we then prove back on layer one. And Ben uh, is available if anyone wants to talk about how we're proving the transactions back on layer one with the protocol called Mosaic that we've been developing. So now back in the app, a few other things to show you. We have uh, an activity feed of all the activities that I'm taking within the app. If I go and visit my profile, here's a couple of key innovations that we have. Uh, so first, if you need more people coins besides the 500 that we give you, you can top up. And you can top up with Apple Pay and Google Pay. Um, and we can do this because the people coins, we've taken great care to have the first version of this app be regulatory compliant. It does not require money transmission licenses because the cash out for the first version is with gift cards. Um, and so what we do is rather than enable someone to exit to Ethereum or to USD, um, you can buy a gift card. Uh, and we also have uh, a fully functional wallet inside the app um, that's embedded and can be in any app. And I'll turn to Ben to really quickly talk about what's going on here. All right, uh, my two seconds. Um, so I'm not sure what's being showed. So there's a QR code. So uh, similarly, if you have a multiple device, you can back up. Um, it's a multi-six, so you can recover from another device. But if you see the three blue addresses, they're actual contracts. Um, one is this token holder address that manages the session keys. And then there's a safe Gnosis address, which is a device manager. And that has a module, which is a recovery module for delayed recovery, which we use for the six digit pin to recover um, if you lost all your devices. So if you go into the about section, you can basically get a link out to see um, all the uh, stats about the app as well. So here we're going out to a third party developer wrote something called OST Watch, which is basically uh, monitoring the OST blockchain. Uh, he, if you look up the uh, Pepo uh, chain here, you see that it's been really nice first week of, uh, of beta. Um, actually, yesterday we had over 2,000 transactions uh, within the app from 400 users, so make it the largest non-game uh, dApp in the world right now. Um, and yeah, so we're around if you have any questions. And this technology you can embed into any application Go to dev.ost.com and you can play around with all the tools and we've open sourced the, uh, the wallet SDK as well. Thank you.